to do. <laughs> okay, our project is on calculus and agriculture, which is calculus used in everything in life, especially in actually mass producing food. Um, I'm Devin Brown. I'm Kyle Chardy. Okay, so the leading into what led to the development of using more analytical standpoints in calculus in agriculture was starting to develop around the time of the Green Revolution, which started in the 1940s to 1970s, which we saw increases in production and industrial procedures spreading into other countries and stuff, which really made people much more aware that we need to be conscious of the amount of space we have and the way that we're producing the food that we have. And then basically that's led to the modern aspects that we have. Um, it's just now that there's more, more focus on organic farming, precision farming, which uses GPS, um, geographic information systems in farming, which pretty much determines what's going on, like, you know, based off the area where you live on, what's the best way for you to farm. And also horticulture, where you're growing f plants and food to eat inside of a building or on the t roof of a building in a city. So, what this really boils down to is people need more food. <laughs> we only have so much space on our planet, and yet we have an ever-increasing population, and so we need to more accurately, more specifically, make our food in a better way. So, the challenge is for us to optimize our product yield of resources while making efficient, sim efficient <laughs> and sustainable food while in the meantime regulating other things like soil erosion and rotating our crops and all the other elements in the soils and keeping everything in a steady equilibrium. And then, which leads to a couple different solutions that we've come up with, is efficient irrigation so where you're not using so much water that you're, you know, stripping all the soil away and causing the deep ruts like you saw on the page before. Um, there's also mathematical probabilities of maximum crop yield based off of different, you know, the different nutrients that are in the soil, which is actually what our calculus part's on. And then the proper rotation of crops, horticulture, and hydroponics. Hydroponics is where you grow plants basically in water, even if they're not fully meant to be. Like, you have them suspended above water so their roots are in the water. It's kind of what the uh, bottom left picture is showing. And then the GPS is uh, for on, on a tractor, showing them where they are and how much they've watered the plants and everything can be monitored on their tractors now. So for calculus, there is this the Grange multiplier, which is the main aspect we found would work best for this. Um, it, nowadays, it's more you take this information, you plug it into a computer system, and it does all the actual hard work for you. So I just wrote down this, basically just the steps of what goes into it. These are just some of the factors that go into this equation. There are still other nutrients plants need. There's, you know, you'd also could factor in the cost of getting everything and being sustainable. So do partial differi differentiate for x for each and every single constraint, which has a different Lagrange multiplier for each one. <laughs> and do that again for y. Do any of you actually want to do that? Just say. So basically then your computer system would find out, you know, what are the best variables for you based off of all of your constraints. And one of the things that they actually have is that the program is often inside of um, little robots like this that are in the field actually being used in Europe, which are cute, but. <laughs> <laughs> and it's pretty much, it just goes through, tells you what everything that you need. You plug those constraints back in, it gives you your variables of, you know, what you need, what's the best situation for you. And you, but you also have to look at it because it gives you maximum minimums and saddle. So you still have to look at, you know, the realistic aspect of what the computer pops out at you. Okay, so how all this can be implemented, there's many different areas, such as even this suit here is 
made. It's I think it was made in Japan and designed for people still in like a much elder age to still be able to like go through the procedures of doing farming and stuff even in an older age. And then making other robotics where they now have like tractors and things that you can lay out the GIS and route everything in and it can like do a lot of your work for you while it's, so you can optimize your yield. And other things like optimizing irrigation and monitoring our yields and whatnot. Okay. And then we have a video. We're going to show you two different parts of this video. Uh, it just kind of goes over a general aspect of the different implementations that calculus has now. Which I'm not sure if the audio will work, but it's turned off on the computer. Yeah, but I'm not sure if it's plugged in here. Um die Menschheit mit Lebensmitteln zu versorgen, muss in Zukunft effizienter produziert werden. Gleichzeitig müssen wir mit Ressourcen schonend umgehen. Die kleinstrukturierte Landwirtschaft spielt eine große Rolle im Erhalt der Artenvielfalt, der Gesundheit der Böden und der Menschen. Die richtige Qualität erzeugen ja nur kleine Betriebe. Ein großer Betrieb kann nur Maßen erzeugen und das, der kann nur die Qualität erzeugen. Das geht gar nicht. Trotz der Bedeutung dieser Form der Landwirtschaft sind viele Nebenerwerbsbetriebe vom Aussterben bedroht. Schwierige Arbeitsbedingungen machen die traditionelle Landwirtschaft nur bedingt konkurrenzfähig. Agria ist eine Landmaschine, mit der die kleine Landwirtschaft zurückkehrt zu einem technologisierten System der Mägde und Knechte. Der Landwirt wird Manager über seine Böden und Erträge und kann auf intelligente Weise nachhaltig für sich selbst und für die Umwelt wirtschaften. Okay, and then, because there's some parts of this that were very childish Strange. and because they're computer animations of what they expect to happen. But they kind of look like aliens. <laughs> but we won't get into that. Okay, let's do this. different things that calculus has led to and helped in making growing crops and agriculture more productive and being more sustainable. So thank you very much. That was our presentation. <laughs>